Prime Minister, how likely do you think it is that the final unlocking will go ahead on the 21st of June? And for Professor Whitty, do you think that all those over 18 in hotspot areas should now have immediate access to a first dose of vaccine? Um, thanks, Fergus. I know that everybody will be asking that question now. I think the, the truth is that we, at this stage, simply can't say for, for certain. Uh, as things stand, um, uh, you know, the, you, you've heard it uh, today that the numbers uh, of, of, of infections, even with the new variant, uh, remain low overall across the across the country. Uh, even in Bolton, where there's, there's been this uh, spike in the new variant, we're not seeing uh, significant new numbers of hospitalizations. It remains uh, broadly flat, uh, and the situation is is different from uh, last year. And this, in this crucial sense, that we we are we are in the throes of, a, of an extraordinary vaccine rollout, which everybody knows and, and understands. Uh, so uh, we, we, we've just got to, uh, to wait and see, you know, that those two things, the, the extent to which uh, the new uh, variant may be more transmissible, and also the extent to which uh, the vaccine, so they've been able to cut the link between infection and hospitalization uh, and, uh, and, and death. And the, we just need to see a little bit more about that. Uh, I, I'm afraid uh, we, we couldn't really say much more at this uh, at this stage. Uh, we will continue to proceed with uh, with caution, uh, but obviously we rule nothing out. And as soon as we can say more about uh, stage four, obviously uh, we will. Uh, on the question you asked me, um, there's been a debate about this, but the JCBR, the International Vaccination which brings together all the experts on this, has been very clear on this. Now, the fundamental issue is that we have uh, a finite supply at any given moment of time for vaccine. So if you vaccinate one person, by definition, you're not vaccinating another. Now, what do we, we know certain things about these vaccines. We have very high confidence that the vaccines provide very substantial protection against people dying and people being uh, having severe illness and people being hospitalized. Less protection uh, against people having more mild disease and some protection, but less still. Uh, against uh, transmission. Mm -hmm. uh, and the expectation is with variants that if you start to lose some vaccine efficacy, you lose it in the opposite direction. So, in a sense, you first lose the very low uh, protection for people who have asymptomatic or very mild disease, uh, then you lose the protection against the most severe disease. And the reason I'm giving that long preamble. Is it's to explain why it is that the thing we know this vaccine mm -hmm. absolutely can and should do is to protect those who are most vulnerable, and that is very heavily predicated by age with this particular virus. So therefore, if we took people, took our, our vaccine away from groups, let's say in their late thirties, and transferred them to groups of people in their who are eighteen or, or twenty, who are at much lower risk of uh, severe disease. View of JCDI, and I think this is the majority of this one last year. The view of JCDI has clearly been this will lead to a net uh, disadvantage. Overall. So the sensible thing to do is to prioritise the vaccines to those who are most at risk in all the places uh, across the UK. This is the virus and risk has to be everywhere, but there are very uh, strong aims to try and accelerate uh, and make easier vaccination in the areas. Uh, which are most affected by this virus. So it's not that uh, we're not trying to take uh, the, the geographical spread of this new variant, uh, the B617.2, uh, into account. We don't have to do that. To do that. Thanks very much. Uh, Emily Moore, thank you. Thanks, Prime Minister. Uh, given that the easing of restrictions is still going to go ahead on Monday, what would you